hey, did you ever wish that Nightmare Creatures on the PlayStation and N64 got a sequel? Well, have I got news for you. This is Bloodborne, and here's how you beat it. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're going to start off by making your character. The name is super important. This is perfect. Make sure you choose Violent Past, make the head as large as possible, and then also make the character look like Uncle Jack from Breaking Bad. That's what got this party started, huh? All right, so the game starts with you basically waking up in like the manager's office at a hot topic in the middle of the mall. So just hop right off that gurney and you can start. Now circle is gonna be your dodge button and roll button. You're gonna wanna blast through this door. Anytime you rate a message fine, it heals whoever wrote the message, so Rate them all fine. Do it. Now run down these stairs and get ready to kick the ass of the first enemy you find. Pound the shit out of them. Uh, you got stuck on a table and died. That's cool. That was supposed to happen. I'm serious. This is the doll. Don't worry. She's cool. Now your friends are going to give you some weapons. Make sure you take the hunter axe and also the blunderbuss. There's no other options for weapons and get the notebook. These tombstones are how you get around in the game. You're going to want to go back to the room that you started in because there's no other option. So remember that guy we were supposed to kick his ass and then we didn't? Well, now you can equip your weapons and you can go and kick that guy's ass. But don't forget to take your hat off. And if you press the touchpad, you can equip important items to this menu. And you want to put your notebook there and you want to write your first note. Make sure you put a hunter is never alone. Now you can kick this guy's ass. Yeah. Go through this door, slam open this gate, turn to the left because there's nothing here and you're welcome to Arnhem. There you are. What more do you want? How about some blood vials? Pick those bastards up. You need a shitload of those. Make sure you rate all the notes fine and pick up these Mazel Tov cocktails. You can put these and other items in your quick item slot. Pull this lever and climb this ladder and then cover your ears because you're going to fucking hate this. <laughs> Now light this lamp and go talk to this window. You must be a hunter. Anytime there's a window or a door with a light like this around it, you can talk to it. This guy will probably kick your ass, but you know what? You're going to learn how to deal with it right here. Use the gun at the apex of an enemy's swing in order to parry it. Make sure you leave a ton of notes. You can be mean if you want to. A rule in Yarnum and the reason that the town is finished is because you must work, so punish anybody who's just sitting around. Whenever you see a note like this, make sure you rate it fine, even if you don't know what they're talking about. Now, when you make it through the town square, you're going to kill this fat guy, and there's a torch. This is the best item in the game. If you've made it to this bridge, you are fucked. You're going to want to use these rocks. You're going to want to use these rocks. Okay, you're going to want to use these pebbles. That worked. Have you played this game before? You are really good at this. You're totally going to beat this game. It can be done, just not the way you want it. Back on! Don't forget about the guy in the chair. You gotta talk to him. He's your best friend. He's got all kinds of knowledge to impart. He's a good boy. Back on! And there's another lantern, so make sure you talk to the door. Go through this window and go to the right and smash through the barrels and go through the arch. Yes. This is the best emote in the game. If you press left on the touchpad, you can get to your gesture screen. Equip that shit. Look at how cool that is. By now, if you've rooted around in the sewers enough, you've got a ton of items. But if you see this little skull, you got to use it because it gives you more eyeballs. Return to the dream by touching, hand hovering this little lamp. Now that you have one insight, the doll is awake. So you can talk to her and level up. This is where you spend your echoes that you get from killing enemies. You're going to want to go for quality, which is 50 vit, 20 endurance, 30 dex, 30 strength. This is a really good build. Next up, you're going to want to go back into the sewers to fight this guy, because right behind him is like one of the greatest items in the game. And it's four items. Can you believe that? Just put that bad boy on. Take the hat off, too. All right, now go back to that bridge that you got fucked on or that you did the fucking on and kill this guy and his crow buddies. Now they say a corpse should be left well alone, but that is not true in Bloodborne. You can get away with anything. So you're up against the first boss. This is the cleric beast. He's a real fucking bastard. Start off with a little Mazel Tov and just start fucking hammering his ass. It's really easy if you just stick close to him. You gotta stay on his ass. You gotta 
Don't give him a fucking moment to rest. This is going to teach you that the more aggressive you play, the better you're going to be at Bloodborne. So show off that style. Next up, we're going to use our Beckoning Bell to summon another player for some help for the next boss, which is Father Gascoigne. And he's really mad because he killed his wife. So I summoned a friend, and this is going to teach you why sometimes it's not great to summon people because, especially if it's your first time, this is going to happen. Where he's just going to delete the boss. So this guy just blasted Gascoigne in about five hits, so... Do with that what you will. If you go to this little birdbath in the workshop, you can spend your insight. Here you're going to want to buy a tiny bell and another tiny bell. This area is where you upgrade your items, and you can also put gemstones in them now. This is the friendliest guy in all of Bloodborne. He'll tell you that you can send people to this chapel here. Good to know. Now, remember how Gasqueen killed his wife? Well, you can pick up a red brooch from her near him, and you can bring it back to his little daughter, who is very sad now because she is abandoned and an orphan. So she leaves to go to the chapel, but if you go down here and kill this pig after reloading, He's gonna drop some red ribbons, which is the ribbon that the little girl was wearing, so great. Now she's dead because of you. How does that feel? You can send this person to the chapel, too. These giants can be intimidating because they hit like trucks and they have a ton of health, but if you just stay on their ass like every other big enemy, you'll kill them. Now, if you want to progress at this point, you gotta smash all these pots in this room. Go over here in the hunter's workshop and you'll find a little stump where the messengers are hanging out and you can give them that little ribbon you got from the dead girl. That, lovely. The next area in the game is Old Yarnum. That sign can't stop me because I can't read. So go ahead and push this door open and prepare for your first warning. Turn back. Turn back while you still can. You're doomed. This is why the torch is one of the best items in the game. It scares beasts, well, certain beasts. Very intimidating. Now, throughout most of this area, this guy with a biblically accurate Gatling gun is going to shoot you for inordinate amounts of time. Here, you're going to fight your first non-boss hunter NPC, and these guys are real bitches. Very hard. This is a good time to learn how to use your gun properly. Nice. This is where the guy with the Gatling gun was. If you just climb up the ladder real fast and shoot him really quick, he'll fall right off. And if you're lucky enough, you can still grab the items he drops. All right, now the lighting in this church is really bad. So the pastor sent you up into the rafters to work on the light fixtures. You're gonna make a couple dubious jumps here, pick up some more items. And when you make it to the bottom and kill all the enemies, you're gonna see my favorite part of going to church. Anytime you see smoke like this, there's probably a sneaky little guy hiding in it. Remember to be aware of your surroundings. Alright, here we are at the blood-starved beast. Now you can throw these pungent blood cocktails and that'll distract him. But what you really want to do is put some flame on your weapon and just kind of stick close to his left side. And don't die. Don't die. Okay. You can try it again, it's fine. You get as many continues as you want in this game. This is a very common stopgap boss for a lot of people, but you just gotta stay on him and dodge into him. Do not dodge away from him, you gotta respect his distance. Go back to Odin Chapel, and if you go out one of the doors, you're gonna find this kinda angry garbage man, and he's gonna beat the shit out of you. And then he's gonna drag you off to, basically, prison. Uh, Yahrgul, the Unseen Village. Now, it's kind of early to be here, but there's an NPC that you want to kind of talk to and know. She's a little crybaby. If the music in this place doesn't scare the shit out of you, then the enemies will. So get out of here, because it's a little too early for you to be here. So go back to Odin Chapel and go through this door where there's a little elevator now. Now, a good trick whenever you take an elevator in this game is to send it back where it came from, because you're probably going to die and you don't want to wait for the elevator to come back down. Okay, run through this area, head to the right up ahead, and drop on down. Now, you're going to come to Bloodporn's first jumping or, like, falling puzzle. Just take it slow, line it up real carefully, and just kind of do it. 
Okay, here, just like this. No, okay, no, uh, no, that was... Okay, don't do it like that. Let's try that again. Maybe... No. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, come on. Let's try it again. Um, do we want to get to this fucking... Oh, okay, well, that's the right platform. Oh, my God. Okay, last time. Here we go. This is it. Yes! Okay, cool. Good job. First try. Okay, pop open this door. And this is going to take you to the abandoned old workshop. This is the same one that you level up in, only it's oh, different. Lawrence, what's taking you so long? So go ahead and light the lamp and kind of look around, you know, check this stuff out. There's some pretty cool items and flavor in here, but you can find one of the most important items in the game here, and I'm not kidding. It's an umbilical cord. You can also find a dress. Have you ever wanted to have your brain sucked? Well, now you can. Harder, Daddy. Now, if you come across any levers in the game, make sure you pull them, because they're going to open up shortcuts. And if you see these guys, they're real bastards, but a quick gunshot parry takes care of them real good. Some of the residents are really stubborn and rude. All right, let's head back to Yahurgul and head down this staircase and just kind of... Oh, no, 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 no. Get, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. Buy Gasqueen's armor with some insight. You can talk to this church lady and you can send her to Odon Chapel. Now, from the Chapel of Odon, if you go all the way up, all the stairs that you can find in the area, you will come to one of the coolest bosses in the game. This is Vicar Amelia. Now, it's kind of the same as all the other big bosses. Just stay really close on her and learn her movements. They're easy to dodge and she's easy to kill. You just gotta focus. Dodge into her. Do all the normal stuff. Once you've defeated that bastard, make sure you touch this big spooky skull. Now you're gonna go to the left of where you fought Vicar Amelia, or to the right if you're leaving, and it'll take you to Hemwick Charnel Lane. Don't disturb these people. This will eventually lead you to fight the Witch of Hemwick, which is just such a pushover boss. There is no way you're going to lose. You're going to kick this thing's ass. It's the easiest fight in the game. She disappears and goes all around the place, and you just chase her down. And super easy. You're not going to die. There you go. See, what did I tell you? You pray slaughtered. Dude, you're killing it. You're killing it. Keep it up. I love it. Now make sure after you kill the witch that you go down in this little secret room because there's a special item here. This will let you equip runes at the workshop. The runes are like buffs for your character. Now these guys have eyeballs on their lanterns. Everything gets more eyeballs in this game. It's really cool, but don't ask why. I bid you for the good blood that I... Now you know this password, so you can just tell this guy to shut up and let you in. Oh, and he's dead. Great, more eyeballs too. Awesome. Okay, welcome to everybody's favorite area in the game. You made it. You made it to Forbidden Woods. Show off a little bit. You earned it. Now there's tons of traps in this area to avoid. There's also tons of enemies to kill. But what I would really suggest is running past and through most of the enemies in this area, because, um... They're pretty tough. The gift of the Godhead will grant you strength. Especially these guys. If you don't pound them quick and fast, they are going to transform into some kind of snake monster. Fucking hate these snake monsters. There's plenty of NPCs in this area, too, and you can send some of them to Odin Chapel. You can't send this guy, but you can join his cult. <laughs> Like I said, uh, a good method in this place is to just run around, grab all the items on the ground, and ignore most of the enemies, because they're pretty hard to kill at this point. If you've made it through the area, you'll get to the boss, which is kind of one of the hardest bosses in the game. It's kind of another stopgap. So I summon some help for this one. This is the Shadows of Yarnum. Now there's three enemies to fight at once. They can get really chaotic, and they also kind of have a, a small phase too, where they all transform into snake people course but if you get a good partner you'll kick their ass no problem good hunting make sure you always say thanks to your cooperators 
Now you might not like it, but this is how college looks in this game. This reminds me of my uncle. <laughs> uh, so jump into this lake after you finish your morning classes and you're going to be fighting Rom, the vacuous spider. This is a complicated boss. This boss will teleport after you do a certain amount of damage to it and spawn a bunch of adds. You can use lightning paper or bolt paper against this boss to do a little extra damage, but all you gotta do is stay on her side and keep on hammering her. Avoid the adds as much as you can, don't waste time trying to kill them, just focus on the boss. And if you do everything right and dodge her projectiles, you will smash this spider. Now this is where a tonal shift in Bloodborne kind of occurs, and things start getting real heady and there's a lot more baby crying. You're also gonna start seeing these things everywhere. Now this area is to the right of where you fought Vicar Amelia, and if you make it through, basically this is Yahar Ghoul, but not the Unseen Village part. So once you make it through, you're gonna come up on yet another boss. This is one of the coolest boss names in the history of video games. This is Dark Beast Parl. Just be aggressive. Stay on him, you'll kick his ass. Don't even worry about it. Once you make it farther into Yahargul, you're gonna start seeing these fucking abominations and they suck. I hate these fucking. If you own the DLC, you'll be able to summon these NPC cooperators, and I summoned one for this next fight, which is a really interesting fight. The sky basically poops out a bunch of bodies that are all kind of amalgamated together, but what you're going to do is you're going to run past the boss, you're going to go up this staircase, and you want to kill all of these uh, mobs that are up on the rafters, because they'll be shooting ass lasers at you. This boss is kind of easy. Stay close to him and just pound on him. Okay, once that boss is dead, you're going to find this corpse sitting in a chair, and you're going to want to touch it, because that's what you do in this game. And this will take you to the lecture building. You get to go back to school. Awesome. You've always talked about going back to school. So light these lamps, and again, pay attention to your surroundings. Oh, great. No, it can. It can be. It's patches. There's two exits you can take after class, and the bottom one will take you to the Nightmare Frontier, which is a beautiful place. Gordon Ramsay owns a condo here, and he put these lanterns all over, and you can just follow the lanterns, and they'll kind of guide you through this area, which can get pretty confusing. There is a poison swamp. And if you make it far enough into the poison swamp, you're going to meet one of the greatest enemies in the game. And it's not these guys. It's these guys. <laughs> Great. I love these things. And you're dead. Now, you don't even have to go into the poison area to make it to the boss, so do that at your own will. But once you make it to the boss, you're going to be fighting an amygdala. That's right. The part of your brain that causes fear. Now, start off by whacking it in the face and showing it that you don't take any shit. And what you want to do is you want to hit its limbs that are glowing. So see the arm right here, how it's all glowy? You want to be focusing on that, otherwise you're not going to do any damage to the boss. So using a long weapon, like the axe in its uh, switch form, it's great. Nice. Now after you finish this area, you gotta go back to school. You just, you gotta go back to school. Go up to the second floor and open up this here door, and it'll take you to the Nightmare of Mensis. Which is a great name, I'll let you google what that means on your own time, but basically what's going to happen is this window is going to start shooting psychic harpoons at you. So you got to take cover as you progress through this area. And once you make it to the spider room, you're just going to want to turn right and go this way. If you keep going straight from there a little bit, you'll find this bell ringing woman who you're going to want to kill. She summons really deadly spirits. Next, you're going to make it to a bridge with this guy on it. Don't pull him yet. Just turn around and you're going to want to kill these spiders that are chasing you. Great. Now you can kill that guy. 
And once you make it past him, you're going to come to this room with all these pygmies. These pygmies are an indigenous Yanam species. See how they just shamble around aimlessly. Oh, this one's a little pissed off. Calm down there, big fella. I just want to get a look at you. Boy, he's a real fighter. All right, let's head on to the next boss. Some say cosmic. Literally nobody says that. All right, this is Mikolaj, host of the nightmare. This guy is a fun boss. He's kind of puzzle oriented. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna chase him through a bunch of hallways until he ends up in a little room where you can pound on him. Now once you pound on him enough, he's gonna run away again and... Oh God, he's like really, oh. He's really turned on for some reason. And basically just chase him down through the environment. Once you kill him, you can show off your style again. Now's a good time to do some chalice dungeons. Now chalice dungeons are accessed via these tombstones I just ran past, and they're kind of like uh, dungeon crawling experiences. They're really fun and they give you some good items and also they're a great way to practice. Now go back to the main game after you've done enough of the chalice dungeons and fight your way through a couple shadows of Yarnum that are just regular NPCs now. They're still almost just as tough. Fight these giant pigs that now have a ton of eyes because everything gets more eyes. Uh, what's going on here? I don't know why I did that, but I feel like you have to. Pull this here lever if you can find it, and instead of opening a door or making an elevator work, it just kind of drops this giant sack of eyeballs. This is the thing that was shooting those psychic harpoons at you earlier. Well, are you ready to fight the final boss? Can you, like, shut up? This is Mergo's wet nurse. Now, she can be the last boss, but for this playthrough, she's not going to be the last boss. Basically, you're going to want to stick to her just like all the other bosses and avoid being in front of her because she has some pretty crazy frontal AoE damage. She also is going to split into multiple forms halfway through the fight, so be prepared for that. Now once the baby dies, you're going to get a third of an umbilical cord again. And you're going to want to go back to the workshop where everything's on fire. Now, what we need to do is get a third umbilical cord. So since we sent the right NPCs, you did send the right NPCs to Odin Chapel, right? Some of them are dead, some of them have gone insane, and some of them have given birth to basically tiny little gods. And you're going to want to kill this tiny little god, and also the thing that gave birth to it, unfortunately. And this is how you're going to get another umbilical cord. Great job. Now before we use the umbilical cords and go to the final bosses of the game, there's still DLC to play, so we're going to get there by going to this amygdala and letting it crush us. This will bring you to the Hunter's Nightmare. This is the first level of the DLC, The Old Hunters. Now this is going to be a ramp up in difficulty if this is your first time playing the game. The enemies here are very aggressive, and there's plenty of tricks, but I'm here to help you. This is a mirror of the Odin Chapel area in the normal game, so run up to where Vicar Amelia was and grab that eye pendant. Check out the scenery, because this place is beautiful. Now when you run through this place, you're going to fight one of the hardest bosses in the game. This is the giant horse boy. No sir, I don't like it. But you're going to beat his ass real good. Don't you worry about that. Just be nice and aggressive. Once he pulls out the Moonlight Greatsword, though, you're going to want to respect his distance and try to stay behind him. Now, just like in real life, when you kill your boss, you're going to want to talk to its head laying on the floor. Thread of light. What a thrill. With darkness and silence through the night What a thrill I'm searching and I'll melt into you
Now this here is a doctor that was messing around with blood. This is actually not in the DLC area. I went back to go kill her um, because you get another umbilical cord from her. And we need as many of those as we can get. Even though you only need three, you need as many. Another area I forgot to go to is Kanehurst Castle. You can get there by going to this weird obelisk in Hemwick Charnel Lane. And then you hop into like a ghost stagecoach, like a stage ghost, I guess you'd call it. And it'll drive you through the winter just like a good Ford Focus, and you'll end up at Kanehurst Castle. Oh my god, they're beautiful. I can fix her. I like this area because it's basically like an episode of Scooby-Doo. Anyways, climb up to the top of the castle, and then you get to fight the Martyr. This guy has a lot of spells that you need to kind of use these pillars to avoid. He shoots out skulls, he shoots out a big explosive psychic harpoon thing again. You're gonna want to bait these spells out and then get behind them in order to start pummeling him. And once you've defeated him, he's gonna drop one of the greatest items in the game. It's probably like the third or fourth best item in the game. A little, a happy little crown. And if you put that on and go to his throne, you'll unlock a secret area. But before we do anything with that, we're gonna go back to the original game where we fought Vicar Amelia, and we're gonna fight one of the saddest bosses in the game. Uh, and this is Eileen the Crow. She's another hunter boss, so just use all your tricks. She can be staggered, she can be parried with your gun, so use everything you got at your disposal. Take her down and you'll be able to buy her cool armor and her weapons from the Insight Vendor. Now find this guy and talk to him. And then go back to the secret room and you'll see that he's basically turned the queen into pulp. Okay, back to the DLC. Now you're in... Wow, you're in trouble, is what you're in. So these meat wads with bodies are all over this place. They're all insane. Once you make it to the top, you're gonna push this here lever and it's gonna raise some stairs up for you so you can access the boss of this area. But by now you should have picked up an item that will let you access the first vicar, which is in the Vicar Amelia area in the DLC. So let this guy do his dirty work, sneak past him, and you'll be fighting the first vicar. Yeah. This guy is really, really hard. Do not be afraid to summon help like I did here. And about halfway through the fight, this guy's gonna be covered in lava, so you can't really get too close to him, but there are still opportunities, so make sure you take them when you got them. And remember, say thank you to your cooperators. All right, you useless piece of shit. Time to clear our way to the clock tower. First off, you're gonna fight the living failures. This boss can be difficult because there's multiples of them at the same time, but if you use line of sight knowledgeably and kind of kite them around the center pillar of Sunflower, you'll be able to handle them pretty, pretty easily. Good job. Now you got the clock tower key so you can push forward into the clock tower. Don't forget to crush any vermins you find, by the way. Push forward into the clock tower and you're going to fight one of the greatest bosses of all time. This is the character that the doll is based off of. A corpse should be left well alone. That's right, it's Lady Maria. Here we go. Now she's a hunter boss, so you can parry her, you can stagger her. About halfway through, she's gonna buff herself and start kind of doing this river of blood kind of thing with her weapon. So you really gotta keep your distance. But you also wanna close the distance too. Again, it just helps to get behind her after she does a big attack. A lot of people will say this is one of the toughest bosses in the game, but if you beat it, then you can do fucking anything. Alright, now you're gonna want to go to where she was sitting and hold up your commemorative Space Jam token that you got for Easter in 1999. And it'll open up this door to the outside of the clock tower. Ooh. All right. You're in the second greatest area of the game, everybody's favorite. This is the fishing hamlet. If you find a well, drop down into it and you'll get this weapon totally for free. You don't have to do anything. There's not really hard enemies to fight down there at all. So just drop right into that well and grab that item. 
You're also going to be chased by a hunter the entire time, so make sure you take care of that. And when you get on this elevator and take it down, you're going to be fighting the last boss of the DLC. This is the Orphan of Cause. There's not a lot to say about this boss that I haven't already said about other bosses, so hopefully all of your training has worked well and will get you through this boss, which is a major effort and definitely one of the hardest bosses in the game. He's got plenty of AoE magic, he's got plenty of range, he'll grow wings halfway through, and he also beats you to death with his placenta, so pretty badass. Lightning Paper works really well on this boss, by the way, but I do recommend saving it for the second phase when you kind of need that extra um. You did great, kid. I'm really proud of you. All right, uh, this shadow, I didn't record it, but you do want to smack that shadow in order to initiate the ending cutscene and actually kill the boss. Now go back to the workshop, because it's time to kill the actual last bosses. But first, you want to crush slash eat the umbilical cords that you got. You need three of them in order to activate the actual last boss of the game, so if you follow this guide up till now, you should be just fine. I'm sure I didn't miss anything. So boot scoot and boogie on over to Garmin, which is in this flower field, kind of like MGS3. And he's going to give you some options. You're going to want to refuse. This is going to piss Garman off and he's going to come right after you. But you've got a gun. Just shoot him and stab him. Now he's going to use all the tricks that a hunter has. So you got to be prepared to fight this guy. you got to be prepared to kick his ass. And you got to be prepared to fucking learn his moveset. It's probably going to take you a couple times. But if you've already beaten the Orphan of Cause, this guy should kind of be a pushover. <laughs> but that's not it, because you're immediately going to go into the best boss in this game. The coolest one. He's so badass, he tries to hug you, but you're like, no, no, I'm a slug. And so then you get to fight him. This is the Moon Presence. A very aggressive boss, a very fast boss, a very big boss. But you've already fought so many large beasts that you know, you already know that you just need to stick on his butt, and you need to take him to Pound Town. Even if you get down to one blood vial, you can do this. I believe in you. Wow. Wow. You really are bloodborne. Alright, there you go. You earned it. The greatest ending in all of video game history. Are you cold? Oh, good hunter. What the fuck? <laughs>